Hey everybody, Rose Matter here, and welcome to part 41 of my Umineko Let's Play. Last episode was a, uh, an interesting one. It was very philosophical. It was asking... Uh, this chapter asks a lot of, like, deep questions, but it really got into, you know, what is happiness to people? What is love? What is the meaning of life? Uh, what is satisfaction and self-satisfaction and all that stuff? Also, really driving home just how bad Rosa treats Maria. Like, we knew that, obviously. But that whole thing with uh, Maria losing her key and having to, uh, you know, have the police come and finding out Rosa is, like, abandoning her for days on end to go on a vacation with her boyfriend. And then Rosa tearing apart Sakataro, essentially killing him. And then we saw the beginning of Maria's darkness. as She said she hates humans and she wants to kill her mother, like... Like, holy, holy crap, that was uh, pretty crazy. And uh, we got yeah, a nice little thing at the end with Angie talking to the Seven Sisters and uh, quote-unquote reviving Sakataro and saying that she's going to give Sakataro back to Maria. And then that's going to be her apologizing to Maria for what she did to her. So uh, it seems like we're heading over to Rokunjima. Angie's heading over to Rokunjima to just hopefully get some answers. So we're going to get back into it. We're going to see what happened. So we're going to get back to that. Uh, I don't know if Angie's actually going to make it to Rokunjima yet. Apparently there's still a decent chunk of the chapter to go. So yeah, let's go ahead and see what happens in this episode. A two-propeller aircraft touched down on the runway. With the weather in these conditions, it could not have been a pleasant flight. Everything after this flight had been suspended due to the weather. Oh man, the, uh, the parallels here. Oh shit. Cutting through the drizzle as she traversed the runway, Sumadera Kasumi entered the lobby with two black suits as guards. The four black suits who had been waiting inside the lobby stood up and respectfully lowered their heads. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's good to see her again. She's such a bitch, but I love it. I know it's gonna get like exciting whenever she shows up. They went into two luxury cars that had been rented. Oh no, she's gonna be. Meeting her at Rokunjima, this should be interesting, the final face-off between the two of them. <gasps> the black suit in the passenger seat lifted a heavy bag that had been by his feet on his, to his lap, opened the zipper wide, and showed Kasumi the contents. Inside were several blocky objects wrapped, wrapped tightly in silver aluminum foil. He peeled one open to show her. Out peeked a black blunt automatic pistol. This girl, this woman's not coming to play. I mean, we knew. We knew that. Kasumi is, uh, she's scary, man. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. I feel bad that I kind of like cut off the last episode awkwardly. If I had known that there was only that much more to go on the, uh... Okay, so we are back. We're back to 1986 now. It's good to be back. Uh, yeah, like I was saying, if I had known that the, the episode, like that little part was already almost done, I would have just finished it in the last episode, but I didn't know, so... It was already approaching 10 at night. The typhoon had already engulfed Rokunjima. Even the rose garden that had looked so beautiful during the day was now being beaten down upon by the fierce winds and resisting with all its might, undulating and trying to keep the flowers from blowing away. That's funny. Now, I like, I was, I've been asking, like, let's get back to 1986, but then we're just at that point with, like, a face-off with Kasumi and, and, uh, Angie, and now we're going to 1986. I'm like, but, but I want to see what happens there. Heading for the guest house through the rose garden, led by Shannon, was Badler, who was holding up an umbrella, Jessica, and Maria, who was sleeping on George's shoulder. Guest house, cry. We can go to the guest house. It's okay, Shannon-chan. No, it's a job. It's a job. It's a 
うちのお母さんとか源氏さんもピリピリしてるからな下手に私たちが気を利かせるとシャノンがサボってると勘違いされちゃうそうだね素直にお世話になった方がむしろ迷惑をかけないだろうねありがとうシャノンいいえ確かにお嬢様のおっしゃられます通り今日のお屋敷はピリピリしていますだから私も皆さんとご一緒して外の空気が吸えるのでちょっと肩が楽です親族会議わざわざ俺たち子供を追い出すくらいだから相当タチの悪い話をするんだろうぜだろうね僕たちはきっと何の力にもなれないせめて邪魔をしないようにするのが一番の協力だと思うよ It's funny, after being with Angie and Maria and the seven sisters and Sakataro so much, it's almost weird seeing them again. It's like you guys are on the wrong game. So, yeah, go kind of has to say. See, if it was these guys, if they were the ones who are older and they weren't corrupted by the Ushurami, a curse, it seems like, with everybody just being so greedy. If it was just the cousins deciding this, there would be no, there'd be no game. There'd be no murders. It would just be like, all right, we'll divide it amongst equally. All right, it's done. Let's go have fun now. <laughs> もし俺にももらえたらそんときはシャノンちゃんにも分けてやるからな<笑>どうもありがとうございますお気持ちだけで嬉しいです I wonder how George feels about this battler getting in on his territory because we learned was it the last episode or the episode before where、um, apparently battler when he was younger was saying some kind of romantic things to Shannon So, maybe there is a little bit of deep seated resentment from George being like,、uh, you know, Badler was kind of Shannon, it seems like Shannon's first crush. Shannon was a young man. If you were a young man, you would have a lot of money. So, this is the same thing. But I think it's a good thing to do with the money. It's a good thing to do with the money. Phew! 無欲だな俺なんか欲しいもん全部並べたら金がいくらあっても足りねえぜお金で買えるものにはだぜシャノンの言う金で買えない欲しいものって何かなジョージ兄さんは心当たりあるささあなんだろうねシャノンじゃないとわからないねジョー僕たちにとっては真面目な問題なんだそれよりジェシカちゃんの方だってどうなんだいカノン君と少しは仲良くなれたのかいえー、<笑>お前カノン君とそういう仲なのかよえっと,と,と汚いぜジョージ兄さんそういう話の切り返し方は汚いぜ<笑>
Or will everybody die before that happens? Which would be very convenient. Badler hadn't uh, attended the family conference in six years, so he hadn't really noticed. But according to Jessica, there seemed to be a very tense atmosphere tonight, completely different from a normal year. Common sense made it clear Kinzo, whose remaining life was short, was going to make some big announcement about the succession of the head and the distribution of his fortune. And seeing Beatrice again, like in her kind of villain form. Alright, so she's about to confirm whether or not he's actually still alive. くそ。爺様は最初から死んでて、その代わりに謎の18人目が紛れ込んでるっていう俺の推理はここに来ていきなりバッサリって その代わりに藁が18人目として紛れ込んでいたという推理は、これでパーだ。くそ。だが、くじけねえぞ。一つの推理が外れただけだ。嵐のように暴風のように襲いかかってやれ。そうでなくてはな、そうでなくてはな。
That's what he wanted to test. あなたたちのお父様はかなり頭はいいわよ。日中のやりとりは多分使用人の誰かに聞かれてお父様に報告されてたのよ。なんてこと。お父様の遺産が目当てで騒いでることは。Oh boy, now it's flipped on them. They were so confident before, and now they're like, oh, we're at a disadvantage because it just looks like we're little vultures, which you are. <laughs> Ava held her head, uncharacteristically dejected. If, as Kyrie had said, this had been Kinzo's design from the beginning, a huge setup spread over more than a year in a bid to find the siblings' true natures, then they had fallen for it completely. お父さんの耳に入ったとまだ決まったわけがない。いい、入ってるに決まってるわ。兄さん以外の全員がお父様は死んでいると言い切り、お父様の健在を信じなかった。And now あ。私は姉さん、しっかり。ローザさん、マリアちゃんは本当にお父様に傘をもらったのかしら。え?Why now, Kiri is so sharp, she's just like not falling for her for a second. She's always just, always thinking. Maria-chan is so that to s h o w she did that. Kyo. So, no. Maria got so tweeted to you. Maitre Chase just dressed up like Kinzo, maybe. I don't know. I always saying that other. Other people may have been dressed up as Beatrice to fool Maria, but now it could be Beatrice is dressing up as Kinzo. I don't know what to think. What it's Kyo, Rosa. Maria-chan got so tweeted to you. Is this the whole thing about like truth? Truth is different to different people. That's Maria's truth, but it might not be the actual truth. Tatoebataga.現実さんあたりがこの傘はおじいさまからマリアさまに渡すように言われましたみたいなことを言ったらマリアちゃんは親父に会ったわけでなくてもおじいさまに傘をもらったっていうかもしれない。Okay, okay. So, so ne. その手が考えられるわ。だがな。マリアちゃんはこう言ったんやろ。おじいさまがやってきて傘を渡してくれたと。ええ、そう言ったわ。おじいさまから直接受け取ったと。はっきり言ったわ。直接か。お手上げだな
お父様が現れれば全ての策は通用しない考える必要もない Is this like the Schrodinger's cat thing where it's just like he could be dead but he might not be dead they won't know until they open the box or until he appears 私たちは訴状の魚運を天に任せてお父様との直接交渉に臨むしかないわそれこそ土下座とげんこつを覚悟してお金を無心するしかないでも逆にお父様が現れなければ私たちの当初の作戦は何も揺るがないなるほどつまりどっちに転ぼうとも今さらあたふたする必要は何もないってことね<笑>そういうことお父様が現れれば本来の親族会議が行われるだけの話現れなければ私たちは引き続きクラウス兄さんを追求すればいいだけの話なのよお父さんの機嫌が急に悪くなってみたいなクラウスさんの言い逃れを決して許さんようにせんとなどうやら。私たちが本当に検討すべきは兄さんがどんな策を漏してこの場をごまかそうとしてくるかよ往生際の悪さは私が一番よく知っているわお父様がお元気なら私たちは土下座してお金を無心しクラウス兄さんの茶番だったなら私たちは醜い兄弟喧嘩を再開し今年も素敵な親族会議になりそうねだな下手な考え休むに似たりってわけかもうじき22時だな兄貴に催促してみるかルドルフ and the rest look at, looked at Kraus firmly seated he looked as if he was awaiting Kinzo's arrival with an air of composure they couldn't tell whether that was really composure or whether he was scheming about how to tie together his lie あなた落ち着きなさいもう今さらジタバタしても始まろう源氏さんに任せようもうじき10時ですね。That was the time that had been set for tonight's family conference to open, and in addition, it was also the time the Ushirumiya family head needed to appear. Right then, they heard the sounds of footsteps approaching from the hall. Oh, here we go. Are we going to get confirmation? There were multiple sets. Natsui jerked her head up with a start. But. Then there came the sound of a knock, and her expression filled with disappointment. Because Kinzo would never knock, he would just come in. Because Kinzo probably wouldn't have knocked. It was Gota and Kumasawa. Unlike the physically fit Gota, it was rare for Kumasawa with her old body to still be tasked with work this late. Of course, Kraus also seemed to know that. Yes, <laughs> クマサワさん。いいえ。こう見えてもまだまだ夜更かしは得意でございますので。クマサワについてだけは立ち会いを外させても良いのでは。さすがに体にこたえるでしょう。使用人も全員揃えろとの命令だ。Tonight's family conference was clearly different from a normal one. On a normal year, no one was able to attend the family conference except relatives. It would have been inconceivable for any servants to be present. But this year was different. They had been told to have all the servants in attendance for the family conference. Of course, they would not be allowed to speak. This is different too, because the, uh, all the servants got shooed away before. They weren't allowed to be there, I don't think. Of course, they would not be allowed to speak. They were there as observers. Just what in the world was going to happen that needed five servants to observe? Even Krauss didn't know. <laughs> this is interesting. So it seems like, I don't know if this is like an unreliable narrative situation, but if even Krauss doesn't know what's going on, maybe, maybe he wasn't lying. <笑>なるほど。まだまだお元気でおられる。100歳になっても元気でお勤めに違いない。奥様、勝手ながら軽食の準備をさせていただきました。いつでも配膳できますので、ご指示を頂戴できればと思います。<笑> 
ありがとうやはりあなたは気が利きますね他の皆さんにコーヒーのおかわりを進めてくださいかしこまりました After bowing slightly, Gota took the paw towards the relatives gathered at the other end of the table. As he did, four,、uh, more footsteps approached from the hallway. A single set. They were light. Even before the knock, they could imagine who it was. Genji, accompanied by Kanon, had gone to meet Kinzo. There was still no sign of their return. The hands of the clock were creeping past ten. Once sure of that, Ava spoke to Kraus. うん。主品の到着が遅れている。しばらく待ち<笑> 何を焦っているのだね。まずはコーヒーでも飲んで落ち着かんかね。兄貴。俺たちは親族会議のために集まってるんだ。茶番じゃない。あと30分は待つ。だが、それでダメなら書斎にお仕掛けさせてもらう
Of the double doors into the dining hall, Genji opened the right door from the inside, and Cannon opened the left door from the outside. So we're actually gonna see him? Oh shit, well... Well, okay. I mean, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> Battler and I are probably feeling the same right now, like, damn it. I was so proud of that, you know, theory it just shot down. Welcomed by the deepest of bows from the two serpents, with his cape fluttering majestically, Kinzo appeared. Kinzo's gait has a dignified weight to it, and it was very hard to believe he had been diagnosed as having not much time left to live. I like to believe Kinzo is dead, and Genji and Cannon are just using, like, strings, <laughs> and they're just walking him like a puppet, and then they're like a ventriloquist, and they just speak for him, and he's, he's, he's actually dead. It's like a Weekend at Bernie situation. Genji pulled back Kinzo's seat and motioned for him to sit. But Kinzo remained standing, signaling with his chin for Genji to move back. He's a puppet. No, he's not real. He's a puppet. Yoko, <laughs> <laughs> え、<笑><笑> <laughs> Ava realized their conversation during the day had indeed been an open book to Kinzo, and she turned red as she hung her head. It's weird seeing Ava so timid. <laughs> Avis like I did last episode. <laughs> Even though Kinzo said he was disappointed, a condescending smile, as though there was no way the likes of them could have solved it, rose to his face as he cast an eye over each and every one of them. <laughs> お前たちの中にそれを受け継ぐ資格を持つ人間が現れなかったことが私は心底残念であり、そして情けなく邪魔ないと思っ<笑> <laughs> the siblings hung their head in silence. Of course, they would have solved it if they could. They had blown their chance, and none of them could deny that. But even so, it was just so hard to riddle. Oh, okay. Does that mean the murders are still going to happen? This turns everything around. <laughs> it truly sounded like Kinzo was making a victory proclamation. Toshi 
What if he gives it to Genji just to be like, fuck you guys? Like, you're. Genji's the only one I can trust. いい金I guess that's why the epitaph, maybe? It's like that's part of it. It's not just someone who solves the riddle. It's someone who will kill everybody who ha who could potentially solve the riddle. Is that the real meaning of the epitaph and why people have to die? It's like there has to only be one person standing at the end. Maybe? Like, the person who can solve the riddle but also is willing to kill everybody to get... To get to it. Jibunwo <laughs> Perhaps it was precisely Kinzo's philosophy. Though it could also be taken for a rant, it was a result of faithfully carrying out that philosophy of his, that Kinzo had raised the Ushirumiya family to such prosperous heights. It may be hard to imagine after his immersion in the occult in recent years, but it was that brutal aggressiveness that was Ushirumiya Kinzo's charisma and aura. So who is going to be it? Is he going to be like, Beatrice, and then she comes out, and then I'll be like, what? <laughs> Like, if both of them are standing there in front of everyone, I won't know what to do with myself. この世を名不甲斐ないクラウスに牛の宮家の全てを継承する資格などない。ならばエヴァ、ルドルフ、ローザの3人にはあるのかこれも脳である。非分の謎を解けず、さりとてクラウスを引きずり下ろす策も老せ
if a specific person's name was raised and proclaimed to be the one to succeed the head. That would surely be more troublesome. But would Kinzo really say something that would benefit any of the four siblings after lambasting them so much? まさか誰にも引き継がないからと財産を全て慈善団体にでも寄付するとか言い出すつもりじゃないでしょうねお父様なら<笑> 前たちに完全に失望した以上、私は誰に引き継ぐ気も失った。よって後ろ宮家はこれで終わる。Wow, maybe that's why they all die. It's just like just take like the Ushiro family doesn't deserve to live any longer. So all of you will be all of you will die. It'll end here. And... He took that literally. Whoever this person is that's killing everybody off, it's just okay. <laughs> Including the children, right? ウシロミヤケなど、あの震災の時にとっくに滅んでおるわ。今のウシロミヤケなど、私がつかの間だけ見ている黄金の幻想に過ぎぬのだ。私が夢より覚めれば終わる程度のもの。<笑>このようなと全ては夢幻死聖など死という目覚めの前には白昼夢と同じよああそうだ元よりそうだったのだ私が死ぬ時に全てを失うのがベアトリーチェとの契約そして呪い <laughs> it wouldn't be Kinzo without uh, a whole rant about Beatrice. And how he wants to see her smile again. <laughs> The siblings are like, just let him, let him get it out of his system. For a while, Kinzo was overcome with cackling and his eyes bulged. Whenever he talked about Beatrice, he was always eloquent and filled with obsession. Nanjo nervously raised his hand, asking to speak. Kinzo permitted it.子供たちを愛するがゆえに大きな期待を寄せそれゆえに期待を裏切られたような気持ちになる親心。え、<笑> それでもそんな金蔵さんに追いつこうと。クラスさんもエヴァさんもルドルフさんもローザさんもそしてその伴侶の皆さんもよく頑張っています。ほほ。よく頑張って。どの程度の金を稼ぎ上げたというのか。人
魂がこの世をしっかりつかんでおらぬということは生きるに値せぬということだ消えろ我が生と現実から消え去ってしまえそれは暴論ですその理論から言ったら私だって生きていてはいけないことになるそんな私でも金蔵さんと過ごしたチェスの時間は共に価値あるものだったと信じていますぞ世の中お金で買えないものもたくさんあることを金蔵さん自身が誰よりもご存知のはずだんふん siblings motionly motionlessly hung their heads they cheered Nanjo on inside their hearts not one of the siblings could offer their opinion to Kinzo in a rage but Nanjo alone was allowed to as Kinzo's close friend Even though Kinzo had raged so fiercely, after being admonished by Nanjo, he nodded several times as though in agreement. His surprisingly docile side might have seemed cute, but there was no one who could laugh. お金では買えないたくさんのものを築き上げましたそれについて言えば金蔵さんにも負けないくらいですほう金で買えぬ何を積み上げたというのか幸せです家族です彼らは素晴らしい伴侶を見つけ幸運に、well, uh, それぞれの幸せな家庭を築かれています、ね、that, that's a little debatable、um... Maria would say she's happy. I wouldn't say Rosa has a happy household.、Uh, Jessica,、uh, she wouldn't say she has an especially happy household. Badler didn't have a very happy household. He literally didn't live with his father for a while because he was so unhappy. The only ones who I could say are seem to be truly happy, and like the family dynamic seems to be. Not very problematic is、uh, Ava, Hideyoshi, and,、uh, and George seem to be quite happy and、uh, they love and respect each other. Like Jessica, she's got her typical teenage you know, angst about like her parents are very hard on her, but I have no doubt that Krauss and Natsui do love her. They just expect a lot of her as what they assume she's going to be the next、uh, head of the family. Not anymore. <laughs> いいですぞ私たち年寄りは私たちには見ることもかなわぬ新しき時代を生きるだろう若き孫に無限の未来を想像するのです Is Kinzo gonna like tear down all the grandkids be like、uh, Rosa doesn't even like you know live with the father anymore Mari is a weirdo Badler、uh, He like literally moved away from his dad Uh, George is cool. George is okay. He seems like he might actually have some prospects. Jessica is just an ill, ineloquent,、uh, you know, bratty teenage girl who can't even speak properly. And she has no right being the head. Like, I can imagine Kinzo just ripping all of their grandchildren, all his grandchildren. So, the siblings all nodded in agreement. Certainly, there had been a time when Kinzo had looked at his newly born grandchildren with happiness in his eyes until they disappointed him, be like, Well, they're not going to be able to carry on the family head with as much、uh, respect as I command. Because <laughs> babies are innocent and full of possibility, and then as they get older, they just become more and more disappointing in his eyes, I'm sure, back when he still had some sanity in his heart. However, was there any human warmth still left inside Kinzo's heart? It's, it's just hard to imagine Kinzo actually happy to be around anyone. <laughs> 
いえいえそういう意味では私が稼ぎ上げた数百億という財産の代わりに息子たちは一人ずつ孫を設けたというわけか<笑>それは素晴らしいつまりは100億を投じて命を一つ生み出したとそういうわけだこれは面白い錬金術的に考えて実に面白い例えではないかほうなんと価値ある孫たちなのか素晴らしい、wow. 素晴らしい The sarcasm is strong. <laughs> so, Nano Kakraus, Omae no Musume, you are Hakuok no Kachinga Arto, you k n o Kraus couldn't answer instantly. It wasn't that he didn't have confidence in his daughter, it was because he didn't have a clue what Kinzo was trying to test with this question. But when Natsui was then pressed for an answer, she responded, breaking Kraus's silence with an answer of her own interpretation. <laughs> Kids are priceless. There you go, that's what you say. You can't put a price on their lives. Yeah, there we go. That's a mother's that's a mother's answer right there. Oh Given the way Natsui had chosen to answer, there was naturally no doubt as to what Ava's answer would be. Even though Ava should have known better than to respond to this kind of provocative question, she did so as well. Maybe Cross would be like, well, then,、uh, that's, that's your inheritance. If your kids are worth so much money, then you don't need any money because they're worth so much money. Oh, I like Ava. She's taking Natsui's answer and she's building on. She's like, my answer is better. Ava sent a glance at Hideyoshi and Natsui that said, like a fiddle. After hearing Ava's answer, Natsui was about to add more praise for her daughter, but stopped at a glare from Kraus. Hmm, <laughs> Naruhodo. <laughs> Rudolph be like, now my son's worthless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love the honesty. Oh my gosh, wow. Well, he's going the complete opposite direction of the other ones. <laughs> バカで無鉄砲だ偉そうな夢やできるわけもねえことを語り出すその一点においてはバカ100億人分に匹敵する大バカだろうさ I love how、uh, <laughs> Kiri is not even like hey be nice she's like I agree also we know that she has a little bit of resentment towards Badler so バカもできねえ凡人どもが100億人束になってもできねえことをとあいつはやり出すだろうよま、俺はどうせこけるだろうとは思ってる世の中は甘くねえしかし奴の人生は干渉して愉快なものになるだろうことだけは疑ってねえぜエヴァ clicked her tongue at the clever style of speech that would probably match Kinzo's taste. I like how he didn't put a dollar amount on his son's life because、uh, maybe Rudolph knows where Kinzo is trying to get at? I don't know. Apparently, Rudolph had been after this himself. He grinned back at her. Maria wa doka. Oh no, Maria. Maria wa watashi no kawaii tatta hitori no musume desu. Okane no kachi de hakare るものではありません Sore dake desu. Hmm. なるほど。夢と未来、奇跡と可能性は我が魔力の源泉だ。希望をなくしていかなる魔法も力を持ちはしない。ふん、すでに凡脈であることを証明してしまったお前たちには何を期待することもかなわないが。なるほど。孫たちには未来の可能性があり
魔法的奇跡を期待する価値はあり得るというわけかそれをもって100億以上の価値と言ってみせるならうんわからぬでもない。<laughs> When Kenzo got in a rage, he wouldn't let anyone talk back. But even so, while yelling by himself, he would sometimes convince himself of something, all of his own accord, and change his own opinion. That's what this felt like to the siblings. Apparently, even though Kenzo had become absolutely fed up with his shoddy children and had cast them away as being unfit for the inheritance of his title or his fortune, he wasn't so sure about his grandchildren. At this rate, he might soon say the inheritance would go to his grandchildren instead of the siblings, as the siblings sat in fear of what their fickle and short tempered father would suddenly think of next. They carefully watched his every move. Hmm. <laughs> いつまでも子供だと思っておったがひょっとすると私を驚かせるような原石のきらめきを見せてくれるかもしれん。I wonder if he would pick Maria because she shows the most like magic potential since we know Kinzo is all into magic and the dark arts and things like that。そしてそれを期待し試すのはなるほど。我が余生最後の道楽としても捨てがたい、はあ、さてこれはどうしたものかジョ,ジョージならお父様の後を継ぐにふさわしいと、no. エイヴァ claimed that right away なつえいきしゅうばとフォローアロンバクラウスゲーヴァーロックテリンハーとレストレインハーセルフシスワローハーワーズ <laughs> yeah, if you look at it from an objective point in terms of money, George would be the most fitting one. But maybe he'll be like, oh, Maria's like, yeah, she, everybody underestimates her, but she, maybe not necessarily for money purposes, but just overall potential, Maria has a lot of potential. <laughs> Rose is like, God damn it, I don't have a chance. And I'm sure Rudolph is thinking the same thing. And I'm sure, to some degree, Krauss and Natsui are thinking the same thing. I think Ava、uh, is the only one who feels 100% confident in her child. What do you think? それはお前たちの誰かに間接的に家督を引き継ぐという意味ではないお前たちにはすでに失望しているのだお前たちに与えるものは今や何もない何もな私が問うのは孫たちだそして引き継ぐかもしれないのも孫たちだそれを決して勘違いするなお父さんの判断に従います。同じくだ。親父の決定に従うぜ。なあ、兄貴。も、もちろんよ。お父様が賢明な判断をされると信じています。わ、私も、お父様の判断に従います。孫たちをどのように試すかは考えよう。This is an interesting... Turn of events. そしてそれはお前たちには今さら関係のない話だ。当主継承とお前たちはもはや何の関係もないのだから。だからこの場ではお前たちに関係のあるもう一つの話をしようではないか。もう一つの話とは。うん、それこそが今宵のそして後ろ見分け最後の親族会議の本当の理由だ<笑>お前たちに求めるのは議論でも意見でもない我が儀式に Are we still doing the,、uh, 
the epitaph, even though he said there's no point because they haven't solved it. The ritual. Okay. Are we gonna see from his point of view he's just gonna kill all of the his kids right now? Rudolph and the rest automatically knitted their brows at the occult-like word ritual. Okay, well, let's think. So they need six, right? The first night, so Rudolph, Rosa, Kraus, Natsui, Ava, Hideyoshi. So there we go. We got the six right there. The adults are going to die first again, which makes sense because if, if Kinzo wants one of the grandchildren to succeed, then they're not going to die the first night. Was he talking about starting a strange ritual involving Bay to reach his resurrection again? Oh, I forgot to, uh, um, Kyrie, so we got more than six. And if we include... Well, no, Kinzo's not going to die this night because he has to test the grandkids. He was demanding that they help. What in the world was he planning to start? In the past, he had carried out many eccentricities that he called by the same name, such as lighting a strange incense and filling the whole mansion with a stench. The siblings, a ritual was nothing more than one of the aged Kinzo's obnoxious hobbies. Oh, Ava. You might regret being so gung-ho about this. わたしが let me check one more time the epitaph. I think I'd have it down by now. Oh no, the epitaph isn't here. Shoot. Okay, I can't reference it. I'm pretty sure six die the first night, right? <laughs> or twilight. I keep saying twilight as if it is an actual literal twilight. It's not the nights. So it's six and then two. And I think the last one is five. Jusan Taken literally, it could only sound as though he was telling them to die as sacrifices for his disturbing ritual. Ridiculous. Was this some kind of metaphor? But they didn't even have a clue what he was trying to tell them through this analogy. The siblings whispered together, wondering what Kinzo was saying. This is where I think that the servants do have something to do with it, because it'd be very easy to just slip them something in their food or drink, and maybe that's why it's like, oh, refill their coffee and all that stuff. He's like, there's no metaphor here. I literally need you as sacrifices. Beatrice <笑>大いに役に立てるというわけだ。<笑> 
この膨大な数の生贄にえを容易に満たせるだけの頭数が存在するというわけだ。I don't know why, but it's this,、um, this pose he's got right now. Is very similar to Battler's pose. And he's even, I just noticed he's even got like the white suit underneath with the red on top. Sort of like Battler. And b a n t e r c h i keeps saying about how、uh, he reminds her of a young Kinzo. I'm just like, there's, I don't think that's an accident. I don't think that's a coincidence. I don't know if that has anything to do with the story. Or not the story, but like the answer to all this. But. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Nanjo is there. Poor Nanjo, he's always just getting caught up in this stuff. You, unusually for Nanjo, his face changed color and he stood up and shouted. It seemed that this wasn't the first time Nanjo had heard all this dark talk about 13 sacrifices. I. I had my predictions. I said in my、uh, theory video for the last chapter that Nanjo may have had some.、Um, Contribution to things like I think he may have helped out in some way. And once again, I don't know if that changes every time with every chapter because things go differently. So I don't know if the same person is behind everything.、And、the last one, I can say yes, it was different because Ava actually survived to the end and we know that she killed people. But I wonder if Nanjo, if he. If he does have something to do with this to help out, if he always does, or if that changes too, because this time he actually seems legitimately like not agreeing with this. お前たちにとって我が財産を得て島を出ることがゴールならばそれを達する方法は二つしかない十三人の生贄から逃れ見事生き残り今さらながら非分の謎を解いて儀式を止めてみせるか私を殺しこの儀式を止めてみせるかこの二つしかない Except we know that Kinzo dying, assuming he actually does die, does not stop the ritual. So, by now, it was no longer whispering among those gathered there, but uneasy commotion. Even the siblings had noticed that Kinzo was beginning to act abnormally. <laughs> ごめんだぜ。<笑> Was the ritual Kinzo had mentioned literally the frightening thing it seemed to be? Or was it some kind of test to choose a successor? It seemed Rudolph had taken it at its disturbing face value. But Ava apparently still believed it was something like a trial or examination. To find the proper next head. But Kinzo's response to this was clear. Sati, what a shkara no hana shiwa ijoda. Ingi mo ikem mo na ni mo shio wa nai. I just imagine Ava's just watching her siblings be cut down in front of her and she's like, no, no, this is still a test, this isn't real. Yonin no fudeki naru musko tachi ga ita to you, what a shi no yume ga sameru dake no hana shi na no da. お前たちにとってこれより目の前で起こることはまさに夢幻あるいはこの世のものと思えぬ理解に及ばぬ世界だろうしかしそれこそが我が現実お前たちという出来の悪き浅い夢は今こそようやく覚めるのださあ
もうゲームは始まっているぞこれだけいては誰から命を奪えばいいものやらさらばだ出来の悪き息子たちよそして生涯でただ一度そして最後に私の儀式のために役に立ていでよペンドラムの記念兵たちよはい。Was never expecting this to happen. I thought Kinzo was dead, and now we're actually seeing things happening.、Uh, whether this is reality or not, unreliable narrator on all that, I still haven't figured that out. <laughs> But it's just weird. Like, if you're seeing it all from the siblings' point of view, if they're all watching this happen, is this not reality? I guess that's always the question. What is reality? Oh, these two. All right. <laughs> Where, who's the third one? Oh, here we go. It's like with each one, is there a new one introduced? Three girls with bizarre forms suddenly appeared behind Kinzo. Where from? When? Who? Who are they? The humans were thrown off balance and their minds went blank. And because they wasted time with such thoughts, they lost their last chance to survive. <laughs> So, two people will survive. Nanjo, I'm assuming, will survive because he's only going after the siblings. But there's seven of them, right? I gotta double check my counting. We got Kraus, Natsui, Rudolph, Kyrie,、uh, Ava, Hideyoshi, and Rosa. Oh, do we have, we have eight? Yeah, so we have eight, including Nanjo. But、uh, we'll see who survives. Oh, this should be interesting. As four ten scratched the air with her finger, a golden bow appeared in empty space and its string was pulled back. The golden arrow that had been ready there was fired off without any hesitation, flew around the room, leaving haphazard gold trails everywhere. And from among those sitting at the table of the family conference, it chose Natsui and pulverized the left half of her face. Damn! Alright, Natsui first! Wow! Okay, so if I pull this back and see this as not a magical thing, does that mean that some actual humans, maybe the servants, came in with guns? And just shot a bunch of people. Because I'm trying to choose to believe that this is, this is humans right now. They, maybe the servants came in, because there's all the mention of guns, that、uh, Kinzo has many guns, so maybe the servants came in with guns and just wiped everybody out. Flesh and deep blood red splattered all around, leaving a massive amount of deep red splatter marks on the relatives' faces and the pure white tablecloth. There was silence. Despite the massive number of deep red blotches left on the tablecloth, even still, no one could understand why Natsui's head was half smashed, nor why she was hanging her head as though she had dozed off in her chair. And they watched these events in silence. Those sitting on the right hand side from Natsui were silent for a relatively long time, but those sitting on her left were not, because the people sitting on that side. Had been shown how her head had been smashed open like a watermelon or a pomegranate, and could even see inside her. Wow. Damn. It's taken a while, but it's happening! Who's next? In the same way, Double O scratched the empty air to ready her bow and fired.
Just like the Golden Arrow 410 had released, it flew around and around at high speeds, drawing a convoluted trail after which, as he looked at Natsui in shock, it smashed half of Rudolph's head in the same way, killing him instantly. This time, everyone did not stop thinking altogether. They realized that a terrible murder had been carried out right in front of them, according to Kinzo's words, and they understood Kinzo would probably kill again. Shrell screams burst out. Even now, they still didn't know what to do, so they could only keep screaming and flapping their wide open mouths like goldfish. <laughs> As Ava asked Kinzo that in total shock, Hideyoshi, who had come to his senses and risen from his chair faster than anyone else, pulled at her arm from behind. However, Merciless Fate's choice for the third sacrifice was Hideyoshi. Just like the two before him, half of Hideyoshi's head was neatly smashed, and the right side of his head, which happened to be facing that direction at the time, was blown away, chunks of its contents thrown everywhere like a watermelon or a pomegranate. They like going back to the watermelon or pomegranate comparisons, don't they? Damn, it's crazy to see this all happening in real time. So still holding Ava, Hideyoshi toppled backwards and fell down. Still held by her beloved husband, Ava fell over backwards with him. <laughs> Ava screamed, and who could blame her? The face she had been looking for had been half lost, and the crushed skull, the squelchy exposed brain, and the crushed jaw were all bare. Damn. Damn, Kinzo! We knew he was heartless, but holy shit. <laughs> Krauss stood up forcefully and was about to rush Kinzo when Double O blocked him. Despite her slender looking body, she held back Krauss's body with just the palm of her right hand. He still tried to resist and attacked Kinzo, so Double O lifted Krauss up by the collar and twisted into his Adam's apple with her thumb. It seemed to be very painful, and Krauss was overcome with agony. He's getting lifted up a lot by his throat in this uh, chapter, isn't he? <laughs> Wow, Kraus, is he actually showing some concern for his siblings? <laughs> and of course, the, uh, the phones will be down, won't they? Of course they would be. Nanto's sharp words finally broke the spell that had been holding them down in their chairs. As Goda and Kumasawa made a mad scramble to escape from the dining hall. Well, okay. Never mind, so... I mean, maybe Kumasawa and Gota aren't part of this, but what about Shannon and Cannon? Oh, they're gonna get killed too? No, never mind. Or maybe not. Maybe they just don't want them to leave. 410 teleport to that spot, blocking the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Kyrie! Of course, Kyrie's gonna snap into action. Of course, she is, and she's probably gonna die for it. The sound of Kyrie's sharp voice, Goda, in a state of complete confusion, ducked. Then a burst of air rushed above his head. Kyrie had taken a big swing with a chair to mow 410 down. But 410, still wearing a, con a contemptuous expression, easily caught the widely swung chair with one hand. <laughs> Kinzo's like, oh, Kiri, if only you were my daughter, maybe there wouldn't be a disappointment. <laughs> wow, and the fact she's doing this after her husband just got her face blown off, too, that's right, damn. On the sleeve of the arm she had been uh, she had used to catch the chair, something like a shining golden snake appeared, coiled itself around the chair, and with a huge crunch, burst it into splinters. It was a fearsome power, far stronger than any vice. 
When Kyrie realized the front, that the being in front of her, which looked like a girl, was actually a being that surpassed human knowledge, and which a human could not even begin to oppose. Her head was filled with a giant alarm bar that welled up from inside her. There they are! Even with a scene like this before their eyes, Genji, Shannon, and Cannon, the servants permitted to wear the one-winged eagle, continued to stand calmly at attention by the wall, making them look very bizarre and eerie. For an instant, Kyrie thought the source of their calmness was that they were with the enemy and had been guaranteed they wouldn't be killed. Oh, they just got killed! But no sooner had she thought that than the side of Genji's face was blown away before her eyes. Wow, Genji! Genji of all people, I'm surprised. Well, now I can't make any sense of this. I can't even think of a human reason for the people being chosen at this point. I, I assumed it was going to be the siblings. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that means that some of the siblings are going to survive, or if not the siblings, then uh, their significant others, because they only need six to die right now. The half of Genji's expression that remained was as indifferent as ever. He tilted, fell in a heap, and sent a blood-red splatter out across the floor. From the meek and frustrated, no, resigned expressions on Shannon and Cannon's face, you couldn't feel any naive expectation that they would be saved. That's right, Kinzo was, in the truest sense, carrying out these murders at random. In the truest sense, he was killing like it was a game to see who would be saved and who would be killed. <laughs> Forten looked at Kyrie for a second. In that second, Kyrie prepared for her own death. But when she had readied her golden bow in midair, Forten looked at someone else over Kyrie's shoulder. So, as shameless as it was, Kyrie sensed that she had been saved. Again, an ugly sound of something crackling and exploding rang throughout the room. Who was it this time, when Kiri turned in the direction of the sound? She saw Ava collapse onto her husband's chest, gushing blood like a fountain. Of course, her face was half-smashed, just like her husband's. Four tennis mercilessly targeted Ava as she clung to her husband's, her husband's body, sobbing. <laughs> <laughs> Rosa's protestations weren't reaching Kinzo as he continued to laugh loudly in the blood splattered dining hall, and nor was she able to lessen Krause's pain as Double lifted him up by the collar. So Rosa had no choice but to use force. Wow, Rosa! She raised one of the chairs beside her over her head and gave a warning. お父さん、兄さんを話すように命令して。こんなことをやめさせて。できぬな。それを望むならば、お前の自らの力で阻止するがよい。自らの運命は自らの手で切り開け。常に誰かの背に隠れ、怯えてきたお前に宿る。Wow! The chair Rosa had lifted up swung down at the father who had reigned as a symbol of terror for her entire life. Okay, Rosa, I hated you last episode, but... Alright, alright. It was the greatest and final act of bravery and self-mastery in Rose's life, and then she dies immediately. Kinzo might have been right. If she had grasped that courage much, much sooner, her life might have been more free, unrestrained by anyone else. 
Then a loud bursting sound, the sound of Rose's chair fiercely hitting Kinzo. It was not. Still lifting the chair, she neatly lost half of her head and fell with a thud. While still holding Krauss up with one hand, Double O had struck her other hand out towards Rosa. The golden snake released from that arm had constricted Rosa in a helix and chewed a hole through her head. After declaring this with indifference, Double O let go of Kraus, who she'd been lifting up this whole time. Wow! Just like that, it's over! This one, this one seems so chaotic, like, the last one it was like, you know, at one point it was pretty much all the servants in one go, and then it was like all the siblings in one go. This one is, it's kind of like the first one where it was a mix of siblings and servants. <laughs> Hmm. Wow, wow, wow. It was a massacre that happened in an instant. The interior of the dining hall was dirtied with blood splatter, and the six unlucky victims lay with their heads brutally exposed. Fittingly, it was Kinzo's abnormal laugh alone that echoed in that abnormal space. Ha <laughs> ha Beatrice Haven't seen him in a while. Wow, and now he's coming into the real world? When Kinzo called Ronave's name, the demon butler appeared out of thin air, bowing deeply and respectfully. Okay, we got the uh, alert character update. Plus, we got to check out that new girl as well. This one, uh, Chester Double O, a weapon of the Sisters' Cavalry, which served Pendragon. Double O had the position of their calm and composed leader. However, that is merely the role that was sought of her. Her true self is far more of a weakling. Double O excels in reconnaissance as a vanguard and as a vanguard and has enormous power to bring the enemy under control during encounters. However, her excessive power level has been criticized as inhumane, and it is not rare for her to be lynched and abused upon surrendering on the battlefield. Her one eye tells of this without words. Okay, and Rodave! One of the 72 great demons serves as a master in exchange for various forms of compensation. Presently, as a contract of the Atariche as her butler, has multiple underlings trained in housekeeping, and he himself is extremely capable as a butler. Employing him has become a kind of status in the high society of witches. Furthermore, the cookies he bakes are superb, and witches will line up to demand them. Should possess enormous magical power, but as he always shows difference, Deference to his master. His power level is an unknown quantity. Okay, I think that was about the same as before. I don't think that's changed. Interesting. They're not showing them as dead yet. That it will probably change very soon. <笑>これはまた派手に散らかされましたよって。いよいよは我が白昼無能ごとき日々を覚ますには、この程度の刺激が必要だ。紹介しよう。我が友人であり、頼れる執事であり、72柱の大悪魔であるロノウエだ。This is interesting. I think this is the first time that we've seen Kinzo and Ronave interact. Just who was he aiming that introduction at? Kraus and Kyrie were still down on their backsides, and Nanjo and Goda and Kumasawa could only look up in shock at this middle-aged gentleman who they'd never met before. Only Shannon and Cannon seemed to recognize him, and they bowed deeply. Okay, 
普通は味は暇もありませんそうですか結構です続けて友を紹介しようイデイオワンバゲリアワオイデイオワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲリアワンバゲこやつも紹介しよう。我が友であり、頼れる相談役でもあるワルギリアだ。偉大なる有限の魔女であるお前の力を、我が儀式に借りたい。その力を貸せお断りしようにも、あなたの強力な召喚霊族下にある身では、それも叶いません。御意に、親方様。I guess they did say that Kinzo is a great summoner. Now we're seeing this, apparently, because before it was Bay Tariche who was summoning everybody, now it's Kinzo. So, in this case, I'm going to say that 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 I'm ベアトリーチェフ復活の儀式を取り行うために私は召喚師としての全てを尽くすだろうまだ足りぬなこの度の儀式の完璧なる遂行のためにさらに召喚しようペンドラゴンの記念兵に炉の上にワルギリアまだ呼べるぞ我が魔力なら我が召喚に応えよ七十二柱が一人ガープよガープ Who's that? ガープ Oh my god, we're still getting new introductions of characters. This is unreal. あれまでも権限できるというのですかさらにこの島の侵食が進んだということでしょう。All right, new character. I'm excited. できているほどです。今さらどんな大悪魔が呼び出せたとしても驚くには値しますまい。もはや六軒島は完全に異世界に飲み込まれているということですか。彼が屈服しないと良いのですが。前回たっぷり入れ知恵をなされたでしょう。He doesn't surrender as Badler, right? この程度では今さら屈服しますね。おそらくですがね。<笑>さて、私たちはこの舞台を楽しもうではありませんか。今回の主人公はどうやら親方様のようだ。お嬢様とは、人はちょっと脚本に期待しましょう。<笑> Little on the nose there. <laughs> Main character is the master. All right, and the whole thing about the parallel world as well. Like, what is that all about? As Kinzo strongly concentrated his magical power, a pale blue light gathered in the air, twisted, and a magic circle began to be drawn with a deep red light. Okay, happy Maria. What? Interesting. Then it shattered with a sound like glass, and a new demon could be seen there. よくぞ我が呼びかけに応えた七十二柱の大悪魔が一つガープよ。All right, now here's someone where we actually are going to have a completely new character info here. Jesus, there's so many. Okay,、uh, Gap, one of the seventy-two great demons. She is also Beatrice's friend. Grants the power of teleportation as the mage requested. She uses this wonderful power only for pranks. Her favorite trick is hiding keys and bags on busy mornings. However, this power of hers is an ultimate weapon that risks delivering the lethal blow to a locked room mystery. Her queen bee like strikes would probably penetrate all famous detectives and make them surrender. Okay, we're getting back into the locked room stuff. Of course we are. <laughs> この血まみれの部屋を掃除するために
Her voice is different than I was expecting. I thought she'd have, like, you know, because she's a trickster and stuff, I thought she'd have a very, like, girlish, childish voice, like the younger uh, Seven Stakes, but nope. The literally devilish woman, wrapped in a gaudy, uh, ominous costume, looked at the horrifying scene, which should have made her cover her eyes, and her mouth twisted into a grin. カシミオのマフラーで雑巾掛けをするようなものですよ。お久しぶりですね、ガープ。あなたのような大悪魔が、とうとうこの島に現れてしまうなんて。いよいよこの島も幻想に沈むのでしょうか。部屋の山上より
我が魔力の源泉がささやいておるわ今はならぬ好きにさせてやれどうせこの島からは逃げられぬわ親方様の魔力の源泉とはすなわちノイズとリスクと運試し<笑>つまりは気まぐれというわけですか<笑>そうとも言うかもしれぬガープご苦労であった儀式はこのまま着実に進めようさてそれはそれとして次は我が孫たちだ次期当主たる資格があるかどうかを試すはてさてどうやってその資質を確かめたものか<笑>その資格があると判断されたならベアとの復活を断念されるおつもりで無論だにもかかわらず試す<笑>女の身にはわからぬであろうなこの矛盾我が狂気など。How interesting. He's willing to give up resurrecting her if he finds the grandchildren to be worthy, which、uh, seems like he's got pretty high standards, so I don't know. I'm still thinking that of everyone, he's going to have the most interest in Maria because of her quote unquote magic abilities. I can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to be a risk. 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 あなたはそういうのが大好きかと思っておりましたがもちろんよ男に危険なリスクと一緒に恋をささやかれたらキュンキュンしちゃうわただしイケメンに限る<笑>お静かに死後は慎むように<笑>実にかしましいやつらだだが少なくとも退屈はせぬこれだから召喚は愉快なのだそなたらには我が儀式のノイズとリスクの天秤の片側を担ってもらうぞその働きに期待している Six brutally murdered corpses lay in the dining hall, which was tarnished by red and gruesome decoration. By now, it was impossible to imagine that 13 people had been sitting here in an orderly manner just moments ago. Kinzo lined up the demons of renown and their subordinates, loudly declared the beginning of an overwhelming night of mass murder, and swore to himself that he would certainly revive Beatrice and open the door to the Golden Land. All right, so with that, I finally, finally got eventually what I've been wanting. We got the first Twilight. It took how many episodes to get there, but man, oh man, was it worth the wait. And just the fact that Kinzo appeared and just seemed to have dashed my theory about him, and he also summoned、uh, people to kill them. I'm still iffy on if that actually happens. I feel like there's a human explanation for why that could happen, but I'm getting more and more unsure of how to explain that. So, this episode was pretty wild. It's funny how、uh, just as Angie was being tracked down by、uh, Kasumi, I'm like, no, we're going back to r o k e n j i m a It was just starting to get exciting, and now it got way more crazy than I ever could have expected. So, I'm quite happy to be back on r o k e n j i m a The Twilights are kicking in. And I can't wait to see where it's going to go next、uh, with the story.、Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Special shout outs to my top tier patrons Nana, Sparky, Dumbass Loser, Tequila Mockingbird, Puncake G, Derek Nickel, Harry Gaziff, Asborn Kennedy, and Icognito. <laughs>